What's going on guys? Welcome back to yet another episode. We are here finally for months. I've been trying to make it out here. We're here at M Toxins Venom Lab. My very good friend Nathaniel owns this place. We are going to milk some amazing venomous animals today. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Here at M Toxins, this is Nate, Mr. Nathaniel Frank. It is your name. It is. So please tell them what you do in this awesome place, bro. Sure. So we are a high volume venom production facility, uh, specifically for uh, anti venoms for the Middle East, Asia, and Africa. That's it. So, <laughs> so you guys have seen um, the videos where I do um, species, like certain videos. I only do it on one snake. But I always try to dish out a lot of information about the venom on those particular snakes. This is where I get all that information right here in this brain. Um, I mean, how long have you been doing this now? 10 years of venom extracting, and then we opened the zoo uh, in June of uh, 2020. 2020, yeah. So long before he had this amazing facility, I mean, shit, you came down to my house in Homestead, you milked a bunch of snakes with me there. Yep. Um, you guys have seen, or a lot of people have asked too about the the Horn Desert Viper that I had. Um, I said I sent it to a Venom Lab. This is the Venom Lab, we'll check her out here in a little bit. She's still here, she's still kicking. Um, do you use her for a lot of stuff or? Oh, uh, we did. Um, she got retired off the line. Yeah. So as you guys know, I love that snake. I had her for a while. But I figured she'd do better saving lives or science or something better than what she'd be in my care. So uh, you, we definitely have some stuff you want to milk today, right? Mm hmm Can we milk some bugs? Yeah, yeah let's cool. milk some bugs. <laughs> Some of the tools we use for big viperids, um, we've gotten some flack on people that haven't really seen the tool, but this is an upholstered pillow. And so what you'll see Ed do is uh, press down gently on the back of the snake, and you'll see it dent in, but again, it's a soft pillow. Um, so that's how we restrain the back of the body. And then here, this is a custom pinning tool that Get Hooked made us. We only use Get Hooked snake handling equipment that venom life that venom <laughs> that venom life here baby <laughs> that guy he's cool i like him <laughs> since you didn't introduce him earlier oh eddie yes no one likes that that's, uh, that's, that's eddie guys no this, she is a male or female this is a female, female. she does not grab it she's okay. just this huge she is a thick girl. I'm hoping my female's grabbing and when I get home there'll be God damn she is thick. Holy crap. Come on, I don't want to tell you. It's only an Eastern, bro. It's only an Eastern, yeah. No snake gives me more trepidation than a big Easter diamond bag. Really? All right, Ed. Now the funny thing will be she won't bite. That'll be my luck. She don't want to bite. I'm 
gonna have to do a different insert. She's so uh, explain that to me. Explain why. She didn't want to bite why. Well, there could be a number of reasons why she didn't want to bite, and uh, I'm not gonna force her to. Uh, well, we'll that's good. We'll leave her alone for another well, 21 days, and then we'll do her again and give it a try. To me, forcing a snake to give up its venom, uh, pushing on glands, things like that, I think it's completely unethical. There's no reason for it. There's absolutely no reason for it. You care for your animal's property, you'll get the yield you want. And yeah, if you're trying to squeeze thing. to get more venom, buy more snakes. True. That is a beautiful snake. This one's small, it's been with me a long time now. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Hi, Pookie. Hi, Pookie. Go. Shed the fang. What are you pulling out now? Bothrops Mujidai. Oh, I got one of those. Oh, now I know how big it's gonna get too. <laughs> so these guys can be absolutely nuts to extract from, but we've got a pretty good system. And with Bothrops, it's all about just slow movements and they usually won't rocket fire at you. Ready? One, two, three. You can see that's no joke. A little look at the fangs. So that's a day of production. Looks like different, uh, yeah, liquid gold pretty much. Yeah, liquid gold. Looks like different liquors. <laughs> That's crazy. So uh, explain to me the different colors you got going on here. I know, but the people at home don't know. I honestly don't know what may in the gland makes up the differences in color. But explain to them what we got going on here. Okay, so we have monocle cobra, so Naya Cayuthia. Um, we have Cottonmouth, um, Naya Haji, Naya Samarensis, and uh, a mixture of different localities of uh, Copperhead. So you can see the Vipers are much more yellow than the Alapids. 
That's so crazy. So how many how many snakes do you have here in total? Five hundred and eighty nine. Yeah. So yeah. literally just snakes <laughs> everywhere. Invertebrates are on the far end of the room and uh, everything else is snakes. You ready to do some invertebrates? Yes. This is a true Goliath. So you gas it for what reason? Yeah. Invertebrates are so delicate that we gas them with CO2 uh, for their protection. Um, it usually will knock them out for about 30 seconds. So from the point that this guy starts to collapse like he's dying, um, that's when we go in and get him, get the extraction done and put him back. CO2 doesn't hurt invertebrates like it would a human. Um, it's just like getting laughing gas. So you're gonna venom extract live breed into it. So this electric pulse is like a TENS unit. Just gently works the venom out of the fangs. This one isn't given much. Let's do another one. So what do you use the venom for these guys for? So tr the tarantula venoms are going to uh, a few different researchers that are studying uh, the venom evolution of these spiders. Um, also, it's being used in drug discovery right now. So, so those are all snakes you've been doing, huh? Yes. Yeah, My arm of the last one? It's the last one? Ooh. The black mamba. Oh, you got the date on that one. Yeah, I didn't put the dates on the other two yet. You should. The worst was the stiletto snake. I remember that day. Get some right there. You see it on the end, Will? Yeah. You don't get a lot. So we got about two little micro drops out of that. Jeez. It's weight in coal. Is it really? No. I think so. <laughs> they should start curling up. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Any doubt. These things will fool you though. Well, why does that not surprise me? You'll think you're good. So I saw one thing once, probably on the documentary, they said that to strike them from these guys, you had to cut open their fangs. Absolutely not. Trying to be super gentle here. This one's gonna be hard to see. Good to the last drop. Come on. Two little drops. Jeez. All that work for that. How many times have you been bit by one? Never. That's, that's a good thing. You should ask Lee to show you the scar from the one I dropped off by accident. Oh, so a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> go down one. What? Just go down one. No, 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 no. So a lot of you guys have asked me how I've always said, uh, you know, different types of, or the same snake from different localities has different venom. So I think you would be able to answer that a lot better than I could because I honestly couldn't answer that. Well, we see it in the timber rattlesnake and we see it in the Mojave rattlesnakes um, with Mojave toxin or no Mojave toxin. Um, and the kind of general consensus is it's all based off of prey and what the local prey is. So we see, uh, we see timbers or, not, you know, people like to call them cane breaks, but they're all still the same. Um, the ones out by you are incredibly neurotoxic, whereas here they're hemorrhagic. Um, so it's interesting and it's all driven by prey drive. So what they eat makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I have 
both of those actually. People, people ask me all the time. They either ask me if I'm going to get a timber or if I'm going to get a cane break, even though I call them both cane breaks. But yeah, I mean, and I I call the snake the timbers out by you timbers. Yeah, because it's all the same. Uh, it's all the same species in genus. Yeah, I always tell people it's just wherever you come from is kind of what you call them for those exactly. for those particular snakes. Exactly. Yeah. All right, guys, I told you we would see the, the horn sand viper that I had earlier. She's here. She's doing great. Uh, I mean, she was on the Venom line. She's no longer, like he said, he did retire her. So here's a close-up look of her. All right, so to keep up the quality of our Venom, we centrifuge it all. Um, <clears throat> basically, what happens, even though we don't press the snake's glands, a snake will naturally release a little blood and tissue um, while it's uh, while it's biting. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the difference before and after. So if you look at the color of this right now, we're going to go and purify it and then show you how it actually looks before we freeze dry it. Freeze dry it. It's all sciencey. It's all sciencey. <laughs> so now we gotta wait a certain amount of minutes. I'm not gonna say how many. Okay. All right, so as I said, we wanted to get the blood and tissue, anything that might've come out. So now you can see there's all that tissue. That's all garbage that you don't want in your venom. You'll see that the, you'll see that the venom is a lot clearer than it was before. So this is basically ultra purified, ready to go and be freeze dried. And what was that from again? This is a uh, copperhead. So what is all this? The freezer of death. So this is venom. This is venom in different stages. The glasses we're still collecting from some of these we're still collecting uh, to build up to prepare to freeze dry. Um, these, this is an order going out for anti-venom manufacturing. Um, and this is all dry to lapidate venom. And these are all viperidase. Jeez. So this may potentially save a life or be used for research. So cool. So it's pretty cool. He's got all of these cages that are here behind me, a whole wall wrapped around. These are all bioactive cages, bioactive for where the snakes come from, like the green mambas, the black mambas, all that fun stuff. So we're going to get out of here, guys. we got lots of other stuff to do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you learned something new because that is the whole point of these videos. I will see you guys in the next video. Like always, subscribe if you're not already. Smash that like button if you haven't already. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace!